Here's our family room we remodeled about six months ago. Um, it's the middle of February and it's staying a lot warmer because of the new insulation we put in. Um, it was a pretty big project, but uh, let me show you what we did. Okay, so you just saw the room that we remodeled and it's been a few months and um, there was two reasons why we decided to redo it. The first reason was of uh, the uh, the walls. They were that uh, fake wood Wayne's coating and we didn't like the look of that. Also, uh, the other reason was this. Um, I had an infrared thermometer and it was very, very cold in the middle of winter. It was it was zero degrees outside and it was reading 30 degrees Fahrenheit in some of the corners around the fireplace. Um, I did a sheet uh, right here where I measured all the different temperatures and that back wall around the fireplace ranged from 30, there was 28, 45, so we needed to keep it a lot warmer to save heat. We were going to save money uh, by heating the place. So the first thing I did, I thought the cold air was coming in through the fireplace, so I insulated that, and that helped, um, but it didn't solve all our problems. Um, as you can see, the stone on the fireplace was reading 50 degrees, and that was radiating the cold air. Um, so before we remodeled, we... Uh, made sure to decorate all the walls and this is what it looked like beforehand um, we had our TV covering that fireplace we had a TV stand so um, we weren't too worried about the cold air coming through that um, but the first thing we did is start ripping down the wainscoting and here was the insulation and at first it looked like it wasn't too bad um, but once we got into it we saw that it was all mold not moldy but it was blackened and deteriorated and this was the worst of it. It was almost completely gone. It had uh, rotted away or something. And that's why those walls were so cold was there was no insulation on them. So it was a good thing that we did it. And here's what it looked like after all the insulation was ripped off. This was the worst area in the back by the fireplace. Um, but this took a couple hours, three people, a couple hours to bag it up and rip it down. And we definitely had masks. Um, this is us putting up the new insulation. We used R13 because we had 2x4 walls. Um, if it was 2x6 walls, we would have used R19 or 18, but this was the insulation we needed for our walls, and we just got a couple of staple guns and stapled it up. I also put foam in around the bottom corners. Um, this was after all the insulation. We started to put up the drywall, and this wasn't too bad. The Putting up the drywall, the mudding, you'll see, is the real hard part, but... We used our laser level to, uh, this was a good trick to mark. You didn't have to mark where all the studs were. You could just uh, put the laser level up and it gave you a good line to follow. Um, this was us cutting the drywall in the backyard. It was real dusty, so we just did it outside. And this was starting the mudding process. Um, some areas right around the fireplace we couldn't nail into the wall, so we used uh, liquid nails and we had to use this anvil to put some weight on it to keep the pressure so the glue would stay. Uh, this is more screwing into the wall. You can see the laser line that we used to follow. Um, this was after the first coating of uh, the mudding. And this is where you really needed a lot of help and a lot of work. And it was real dusty and you had to do several layers and thin it out. And the mudding is what really took all the time and the sanding. Here was the sheet I used that I measured all the, the drywall pieces we need. The cost, it was $120 for drywall. Um, all the caulk and the insulation was 130. We were right around 400 bucks with the paint and primer and everything when we were done. Um, this was our primer paint that we put on. We didn't paint directly on the drywall. We bought a cheap can. I think it was nine or ten dollars of Valspar, the nine dollar white primer, and that helped the paint go on a lot smoother. This was absorbed by the drywall, the cheap stuff. Um, this is what it looked like when we were done painting. And then we started with the baseboard and crown molding. Um, the baseboard was quite easy to do. You just had to cut it exactly how you wanted, 90 degree angles. It was real easy, you were working on the floor. The crown molding was the hard part. Now this was just some round over stuff we put around the fireplace. This was one of our worst corners of crown molding. The first one we had done, and we found out halfway through that the reason why it wasn't working so well was because um, the corners were not 90 degrees, they were <clears throat> they were 88 or 92 degrees. Also that our ceiling was wavy, so it was hard to get a good uh, seal at all the joints. But we eventually got it up after a lot of work, and the hard part also about crown molding is you're holding it 
up in place the whole time, as opposed to baseboard where you're setting it on the ground and one person can do it. Crown molding, you need two and you're holding it in place and it's a real pain. And you have to go back. We didn't have a nail gun at the time, so we did it by hand. We were setting the nails in. Um, we also changed the outlets to new ones. You can see the old ones down here are pretty bad, and these outlets are only 50 cents, and the covers were 50 cents too. So it's a real cheap, easy fix. You just turn off the power, connect the wires, and that made a big difference too. Uh, here's where we took the spackle and we uh, covered up all our mistakes. If you look at it now, you can't really tell we made these terrible mistakes, but at the time we thought it was you know, going to look awful. But you can see how it's tight here and gapped here. We filled that in with caulk, which is what Carrie was doing. She went around for hours and filled in all the gaps with the white caulk. Here's uh, a view from the garage. That foam that I put in when I did the installation, it was leaking out into the garage, which shows just what kind of gaps and airflow was getting in from the garage to that room. Uh, and then Carrie went through with all these brushes and painted the crown molding and the baseboard uh, white. Um, here's what it looked like when we were all done. It looked really nice. We kept a white ceiling and you can see the baseboard, the edging, and the crown molding. Here's a closer view of that same corner. And this is what it looked like all completed. Um, it was a few weeks of work and it was a pain by the end, you know, after the mudding we thought that was the worst part, then we did the crown molding and we said we're never going to do crown molding again. Uh, when it's all done it looks great, but it was a bit of a hassle, but uh, I have to say it's middle of February and it is warmer in there. So we are saving money from now on with the heat bills. I'm glad we did it because of the insulation. So it's a two week project. Uh, if you're people like us, just, you know, we had a few tools, but nothing fancy. Bring some family and friends over to help you cut the drywall and put that up and help you paint. So uh, good luck and let me know if you have any questions.